All right, so this is where we have gone ahead and completed the mounting of the maxillary cast. As you can see, this is how our mounting is supposed to be. It starts from the base of the cast and ends at the base of the mounting plate. Does not extend onto the cast, does not extend onto the peripheral rim of the plate. And whilst we allow for this to set, it's important that we keep some elastics here, making sure that the setting expansion of the plaster does not cause this portion of the rim to stand up or separate from the indirect mounting jig. Now that this is ready, we will now prepare the articulator to receive the mandibular cast mounting. So the first thing we do is separate out these elastics. We no longer need them. Once the elastics are out, it is important that we go ahead and uh, lift the upper member of the frame. All right, and separate the maxillary cast out. See, the magnetic plate allows for you to do this very conveniently. Keep this safely. Now open this up and remove the indirect mounting jig. You simply slide it out, move it aside. We no longer need this for the mandibular mounting. Go ahead and retrieve also the cast support. Now in place of the cast support, we will go ahead and place the lower metal mounting plates. I now go ahead and place the incisal table. Now remember the broader end of the table faces upwards. This is the knob. This is how it goes in. Now we don't slide it in all the way. Now remember this can go a lot further back. It can go all the way. I will not do that. I will keep it somewhere towards the front arbitrarily. I now take my incisal pin. Now remember this incisal pin has a lot of markings here. I will always do my mandibular mounting by keeping the spin at plus five, which means five lines above zero. And the reason I do this is because I have recorded the CR with the help of the unwind in the patient's mouth. Now remember the unwind has a five millimeter disocluding table. So I compensate for that five millimeters by mounting the mandibular cast at an additional five millimeter. All right, so we keep the incisal pin at plus five and go ahead and connect it to its proper location, which is on the top of this rim, All right? Now the incisal pin is supposed to go and touch the incisal table because I'm using a flat table here. It actually does not matter whether the pin touches the center towards the back or towards the front. Now that this is done, I go ahead and look at the back of the articulator. Now, as you can see, these are the values going from zero to 60 of the horizontal condylar guidance angle. So at the start of my mounting, I will go ahead and set this at 15. Now see how I change this value. It goes from 0, 5, 10, 15, and I go ahead and set this at 20, which is the fourth line from the back. I've done the same thing towards the other side already, but remember when you're mounting, both sides have to be preset at 20 degrees. Now that the articulator is ready, let us go ahead and orient the maxillary and the mandibular casts with respect to each other. Now we do this with the help of this centric relation record. I prefer to break away these small canine extensions before the mounting as it sometimes tends to interfere. So I go ahead and I adapt this on to the upper frame and I go ahead and I adapt the mandibular cast onto the lower side. Now it's extremely important that these are completely stable and seated with respect to each other. If they are not stable, your entire mounting will go wrong. So please take time to stabilize these. As you can see, the upper and the lower member fit into each other perfectly. Now at the time of mounting, it is very common for the lower member to slightly open up from its position. We don't realize it until the mounting is done. So before mounting, let us stabilize the upper and the lower member. And I prefer to do this with the help of glue stick from a glue gun. We go ahead and place some increment at the back here. This seals the upper and the lower member towards this side. I put in a little more also over this side. Allow this to harden a little. Go ahead onto the other side and repeat the exact same thing. 
Now there are various materials available to do this. I prefer to do this with the help of the glue stick because once the upper and the lower members have been mounted, this glue stick can very easily be separated from the cast without hampering the quality of the cast in any way. Now that this sets, it holds the upper and the lower member with respect to each other, making sure that this does not leave the wax wafer until my mandibular cast mounting is complete. Now remember, whenever you are mounting the mandibular cast, it's important to go ahead and remove this off. Because when we are mounting the mandibular cast, the mounting is actually done by completely tipping the articulator over onto its head. All right, so my articulator is kept ulta, which means this will now be my maxillary side. Right. This is how it goes and sits in. Now, because I have a nice and thick mandibular base, as you can see, very little amount of plaster needs to be added to mount the mandibular cast. If my mandibular cast were thin, I would have to add a lot of plaster here. In the next portion of this video, we will show you how to complete the mandibular cast mounting on the semi-adjustable articulator.